Tommy, first off, how are you doing? How have you found lockdown? It's been a difficult time for so many. How have you got through it all? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a difficult difficult time um, for all of us, um, definitely including myself, because, you know, at the start of lockdown, boxing was uh, cancelled. You know, there's no shows, there's nothing going on. And obviously, mentally, you know, boxing is my life and I wasn't able to do that for a good few months. So, uh, you know, obviously it had a toll on me, but I decided, you know, keep training, keep working hard, keep keep the weight down and, you know, things will come good. And it did in the end and I'm privileged to be sat here now and um, boxing ahead of Saturday night. And how are you feeling heading into that big night on Saturday? I'm feeling good, you know. Um, it's, it's every time, every time it's the same feeling. Uh, you know, every time I come down to London and I'm in the hotel and it's fight week uh, and it's three or four days to go, you know, the feeling remains the same. Uh, I've trained hard for 10 weeks. I've known what I've put in. I've left no stone unturned. Um, and it's been my best camp, you know. And I, I know a lot of boxers say that, but this genuinely has. Um, I've been inspiring some good quality guys and more than holding my own, let's just say, in, in the ring. So... You know, I'm very happy the way things gone and I'm, I'm ready to go out there Saturday night and put on a show for everybody. I imagine the pandemic came at a really difficult time. Of course, it affected everybody, but in terms of halting the momentum you were trying to build? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, the momentum was going good. I had that fight in December, you know, coming off from Love Island. Um, and the plan from there was just to keep, you know, keep busy, keep active, you know, keep getting good learning fights. And obviously the pandemic, you know, you know, wiped all them um, ambitions out because obviously, you know, it's a worldwide thing going on. And it's um, it's hard for everybody, but we've got to understand that. And like I said before, I'm just really privileged to say, you know, I am boxing on Saturday night when the world is in such a bad time. Um, so we've got to take every every day as a blessing. A lot of people have been amazed by that Instagram post you put out the other day, the six weeks yeah. transformation. What drove yeah. you to do that? Because it's not something that you can do half measures. It's something you've got to fully commit to. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's something, you know, just to say, like, I know the world is in a bad place, but no matter how bad the world is, you know, we can still get, we can still kick on, you know, we can go and train, we can we can boost our mental health and we can get ourselves in good shape. You know, I, I'm exactly the same as everybody else, but I was, I, I did that but just off my own accord. I had faith in myself. I believed in myself. I trained very hard and I ate the right food. And that's just, good, you know, telling everybody out there, no matter how hard the world is at the minute, you know, you can always look positive, you know, instead of, you know, sitting at home, maybe having a glass of wine every night and thinking, oh, well, the gyms are shut. There's nothing I can do. You know, put the glass of wine down, get on your water, maybe go for a run, do some home workouts. And, and, that, and that was just the aim of it, really, you know, to show everybody that you can get in shape without a gym. And also for me, upcoming fight, you know, I take boxing very seriously. Boxing is my life. And when I've got a fight coming up, nothing else matters. You know, that fight is the only thing that goes on inside my head. So uh, it's 100 percent focused every time. You said that the other day as well. You said that boxing outweighs the celebrity status by a mile. Yeah, of course. You know, it's hard to get away from the celebrity status because, like here, we pulled up in London before. I was walking to the hotel. You know, people still want pictures. They still want autographs. You know, it's you can never really get away from it. And now, really, when I'm in this room for 24 hours, well, the whole week, because you're not because you're not really allowed to leave the hotel. You know, that's the only time I get away from it. You know, I can really be on my own and zone in. I think that's the best thing to do for me. You know, celebrity lifestyle and glitz and glamour is one thing, but boxing is different and the two does not go together. You know, if you try and mix it hand in hand, it, it doesn't work. You will come up short. Um, so, you know, I've just believed in myself. I've put everything to one side, even work that's come in. I've said, no, we'll, we'll continue after the 27th because the 27th is all that matters to me right now. And in terms of the training situation, you're now just with your dad now. How are you finding that? Does that pose some challenges as well as obviously he's got some immense experience both in the ring himself and as a trainer? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it's been good. You know, my dad's trained me my whole life. Um, I'm obviously his son and he knows me best. So with that, with that being said, he knows when to push me. He knows when to hold me back. He knows what right what fights are right for me. He knows the direction to push me in. And that's the best thing for me right now. You know, I'm I don't worry about anything now because I know one hundred thousand percent that my dad has got my interest at heart and he wouldn't do anything to put me in the wrong position or get me hurt. So, you know, I don't have to worry about that. And that's a great position to be in. And I believe you're back at the Jim Egan's Boxing Academy, and that's where Tyson started all those years ago. Yeah, definitely. We brought it back to grassroots, you know, where uh, I'm only living up the road in Hale and the gym is literally, I think it's five, six minute drive. So it's, it's perfect for us. You know, Steve Egan's been there since the start with my dad. 
Um, and we're there, you know, we're doing it. Um, just around the corner, just ourselves, you know, it's me, my dad, Steve Egan, Arthur Little, we've got Mick Carney, my manager, we've just got our own little team. And we're just kind of going with it. You know, we're forgetting all the glitz and glamour and we're just getting in the gym and we're working hard. And there's no there's no way around that. You get in the gym, you put your gloves on, you, do, you sweat your blood tears and you get out. You get in, you get out. And at the end of the day, boxing is the hardest sport in the world and you only get in what you put out. So I'm putting in 110% every time, you know, and the great people around me are giving me 110% as well. And as soon as you get in the ring and as soon as you get into training, do you almost forget about the name and you forget about the celebrity status which you have now? Is that easy to do? Yeah, definitely. Because when you're tunnel visioned and as focused as I am, you know, and I, it's not like I've reached my goal. Like, yeah, I've, I've got a fair few followers on Instagram and I get recognised when I walk outside. That isn't a goal for me. My goal is to be, you know, a world champion. And I'm far, very, very far from that. So how, when you have such a vision in your head that you want to get to, and it's such a, you know, massive task, you, you, don't, you don't have time to go in the gym and let things creep into your mind. It's solely, when I get in the gym, it's solely boxing. My ears are open, I'm like a sponge, and that's it. When I come out is when I come out. But when I'm in that gym, nobody can get through to me. My phone is off. I'm there to work. And when I come out, we can deal with things then. But when boxing is around and mentioned, then, you know, that's me, you know, because that is my life. And I'm not like any of these, you know, Love Islanders that are just, you know, passing the time by now. I've not even done anything that I want to do. You know, I've, I've got a very hard task in front of me. And it's not going to come if I sit around and keep taking fancy photos and going for nice meals. You know, it's, it's all about bleeding your guts in the gym paying your dues and paving your way. And what do you see that pathway being for you inside boxing? I imagine the target this year is just to stay active and, and box as many times as you can. That's the plan, yeah. Stay active, box as many times as I can, you know, keep getting regular fights. God willing, I'll come through this on Saturday. You know, God willing, we push on and we keep getting more fights and we keep growing, we keep learning. Uh, but that, that that's just the plan at the minute. And I, But, you know, all being said and done, I don't look past Saturday night. And I believe I'm right in saying that you've been training with Tyson maybe once or twice a week at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, we go up to Tyson's. It's just a just to change the scenery, you know. Um, and obviously, it's good to tra- see Tyson train. You know, keep an eye on him, see what he's doing, see what he's doing differently. Because every, me going up to Tyson's is such well, it's the best experience you can get. You know, imagine training twice, once a week with the best fighter on the planet. You know, and, be, and being accustomed to having all this access in your corner. You know, I can't, you can't, words can't describe how good that is for me to see him in his element and knowing that everything he's got, I want. So it's perfect for me. And, you know, being able to go up there once, twice a week, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a dream, really. Talk me through those training sessions. How close are the two of you get inside the ring? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know when we go up there, it's serious business. Uh, when we go up there, we do maybe 20, 30 rounds of body sparring. Uh, there's no rest. We go straight through, we work hard. Um, but, you know, that's that's the championship mentality, you know. Tyson trains like, a, you know, a world champion, like the, the best, the best of the best. And that's how you've got to train. But when you're around Tyson, you just get that, you just get that aura anyway. You just know, like, you know, this is the cream of the crop. It, it, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Um, so when you go down there, you put your best foot forward and you try as hard as you can and you don't do anything wrong. You just you tunnel visioned because again, you, you, you kind of want to impress, not impress, but you kind of want to show what you've got. So it's, it's, it's great going to Tyson's. For you personally, I mean, you shot onto the scene with, with Love Island. Everybody knew who you were. Has that calmed down a little bit now or, or do you still feel the effects of it? Do you still feel like uh, your, your flavour of the month or, or is it dying down to an extent where you do feel like you really can focus on the boxing? No, to honestly, I would be very truthful because, you know, anybody that knows me, I'm not that I'm not kind of person to be like, yeah, I'm still in the limelight and this and that. You know, if I wasn't, I would say I wasn't. But when we go outside, you know, it's no different to when we first came out. You know, if I go down to the traffic centre, it's still the same. If I go out to do the shopping, it's still the same. You know, it's, it's nearly two years on and I was literally walking from the car park to the hotel and I must have told like 50, 60 photos. So it's, 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 it's not died off in the sense of that. It's just more that I've got my priorities straight. You know, I could easily let that in and disrupt what I'm doing here. But the only difference there is, is I've, you know, set my mind to boxing and I've kind of let all that stuff flutter away. You know, that's the only difference there. And as you said, you told your advisors, listen, I don't want to see anything until after this fight is done on Saturday. That's the focus you have now. Yeah, definitely. You know, any work that comes in for me, I say, yeah, 
perfect. It's all good, lovely. We'll tend to it after the fight because at the end of the day, boxing is what keeps me going. Boxing is my drive, and without boxing, I've got nothing. So why would I look at a little job or a contract or you know sponsorship or whatever it may be over the most important night of my life, which is every fight? Because Saturday night is my world title fight. Like everything, Saturday night is my world title fight, and. We, we have that same mentality going up. Each fight we have, we have that same mentality. It's a brilliant mentality to have. You mentioned world title fight. Is that one day the dream for you? Does that have to be the dream for you to keep you going and, and keep you focused? I believe in anything that you do, you know, whether you work in an office, whether you work in a, you know, a, a car garage, whatever you are doing, you should aim to be the very best. You know, whether you're in sport, you should aim to be the very best. Whether you're working at, you know, an office, you should, you should, you should, you should strive to be, you know, the boss, the chairman, whatever that may be. You should always strive to the very best because if you don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you should be in, this, in in what you're doing. If you don't want to be the very best at what you do, then there's no point in doing it. And that's all the mindset I've got. You know, if you're going to do it, do it right. And boxing is the hardest game in the world. And um, and if I didn't think I'd go all the way, and I'm in a position now where I don't need to. I would not be getting my head punched and risking my life every time I get in the ring, you know, because financially I don't need I don't need boxing, but it's my passion. That's why I do boxing. So, you know, I know what my ability is. I know what my dad says around me. I know what my brothers say around me. And that's that's my drive. I know that I've got it in me. I just need to get the experience, get the fights, and it'll come out very slowly, slowly but surely. And just finally, on your brother, Tyson, how close are we to an announcement, do you feel? AJ against Fury. Do you feel like we're close? I'm, very, I'm hoping very soon, um, very, very soon. Um, but at the end of the day, Tyson's ready to fight. Tyson's ready to fight 24-7. You know, he proved that. He had three years off and come out and fought Wilder. You know, the ball is in AJ's court now. A AJ and Wilder was talking for four years. Oh, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to do this. Tyson got straight off the couch and said, right, I'll fight you because he obviously isn't. And that is what it's like now. We are ready to fight. Joshua, the ball is in Joshua's court. So whenever he wants to find the pen, then get it signed, the quicker you guys can get the announcement. Brilliant. Tommy, great to speak to you. All the best this weekend. I'm sure we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much. God bless.